Hello everyone and welcome to another All Will Be One draft where we open a um, hmm, Anctus. Uh, it's a decent card. Of course, if you are blue. It's double blue though, it's not really splashable. I'm not sure even if it was, would I be that interested in splashing it? You can turn any other creature you control into an artifact so it gets the plus one plus one. Um, yeah, maybe I'll take it because it's a rare I haven't really played much with. I think the Anoint with Affliction would be the safer pick. Um, but who knows, maybe Blue Black will be underdrafted and the Voidwing Hybrid will come back to me or something like that. Anyway, you could take this and I wouldn't. I would maybe even suggest taking this as a safer pick, but maybe this can this can do some nice stuff. Also, I'm locking into blue with this first pick. Of course, I'm not locking. I mean, of course, I won't be forcing blue, but if I want to play this card, I have to be main color blue, whereas the Anoint with Affliction, for example, is a splashable card as well. And what is this? This is the second draft I'm getting past this guy. Literally my previous draft was a Archfiend of Dross, of the Dross. A draft. Well, I mean, someone took an... Again, the same story continues. If I'm not mistaken, in the previous draft too, a common was missing. So same same story here. All the other commons are here. So maybe someone took like a hex gold slasher. I don't know what, what the heck, but <laughs> I mean, this is of course a crazy bummer. You should always first pick this in a draft. I mean, you, you can't hate drafting black in this set. It's not even that bad of a color. Um, this is just a, gonna... I mean, if you see my previous draft, I basically won the matches because of having, you know, two of these, a spoiler, <laughs> but I had two of these in the deck, and uh, yeah, I won, won the matches because of this thing. It's just uh, in, insane. Well, <laughs> I don't know. And now I'm getting like past the vault charge, so if someone like forces red, at least an, a rare and, a, and an uncommon is missing, are missing from this pack, so maybe they were something crazy good, or well, someone red drafted, but I'm getting a vault charge, so if someone really went to red, I don't know what's going on. Anyhow, there's not a there's no black or blue card I'm willing to take here. The best two cards are the Vault Charge and the Char Forger. Mm. Well, if I'm gonna be black red, both are gonna work. Of course, I do want to play the Archfiend more than the Anctus. I'm willing to abandon blue, or I could be blue black if possible. But uh, it's, it's gonna be the pick in here is gonna be one of these. I'm not gonna force green and take the Cultivator, which you know I guess you could do. Um, World charge charge for I mean I guess the charge water can come back to me. It's if no one is black red, I suppose it can come back. And what is this pack? First of all, there's a troller rig and an Anctus's retrofitter, both pretty good ones. Um I don't have any artifacts, but uh, in addition to that, there's the best green common contagious forak. Definitely better than the ruthless predation. Um, there's also a decent uh, red two drop. Axum Uncraver is a card you're very happy to run in your red decks. Even the aggressive ones, even though it has only two, one power, it's very good utility to get to, you know, filter away a useless card from your hand to replace them with better stuff. So I, I would maybe take the Warak if the, I mean, if this was only the retrofitter here, because this is a signal, it should be also a lot of green here. But because I have the Anctus here, maybe I'm gonna take the Troll Drake. Blue Black a Proliferation deck is, is definitely good. And why am I seeing another Vorak? Now, if I knew I'm gonna get past another one of these guys, I would have just taken the Vorak. And then I don't even care what other color I'm gonna pair with it, but double Vorak for green, that, that would be a very, very good start for a deck. Uh, because the fact is, it almost guarantees more land drops. It's so nice when you have, a, when you are paying a three mana for a three three, which is a totally fine card when it nets you another card. All right, so what what am I supposed to do here? Um, don't know even what I was talking about, but I mean, transplant theorist. That's not really a good card, even. The best card in the pack is the Vorak. I could take the Hive Master if I'm playing black, but no, I'm taking the Vorak. I'm very sad about not taking the Vorak uh, on in the previous pack, what, but what can I do? Alright, so I don't see black, so the Archfiend probably is gonna get abandoned. There is a Shrapnel Slinger. Um, there's some blue, of course. I guess there's like a reason to try to be green-blue with Anctus and Troller Rake. 
Green has a lot of proliferating, so the Thriller deck does work uh, both in bl uh, blue, green, and blue, black for sure. I guess I could take a two drop defensive card, maybe try to be some kind of a late game deck. I don't think this pack is even that strong. You could take the Slinger and still maybe go to red, blue, red, green. But it's still not the greatest two drop from red. <laughs> what the? Uh, can I go back in time and have three Vorax after pack one? Hey, I mean, that maybe this means that I'm gonna, if these cards get opened later in the draft, I'm still getting them. So, I mean, if I have like four of them in the end, maybe I don't miss the. I won't be sad about not having five of them. But yeah, this is an easy pick, of course. What what crazy stuff is going on? This is totally first pickable card. I'm pretty sure I will be green here. I don't, no, don't know about my second color. Mm. I have one good black, one good red. No, nothing white. And then there are blue cards that are, you know, definitely cards you would run in a <laughs> blue deck. Um, Titanic growth. Fisher, I don't know, with double of Urak, I might even take the 5-drop blue card, let's take it, because it's easier to get the 5th mana with that thing. And here, a um, couple of things that proliferate, which work very well with the trolling, Troller Drake, of course. I like that cheaper one more, uh, so let's take it, could be blue-green. And uh, hey, would it be funny if the Urak comes back, that the one I passed, but, but because it's pretty crazy that there's an infectious bite here. Uh, yeah, it's gonna be the pick, but this is a very good green card. It is super late. Well, I'm happy about having it. And oh yeah, green is totally open. I mean, I might even get the Forak unless someone like hate picks it. Here, I'll take the Cultivator. It's the best of the bunch. And uh, I can take. The, oh, there's also the Engraver. Engraver. How do you say it? Um, still in the pack. Hunter Maze Basilisk. I don't care about the Basilisk. I have a two amazing three drops already. Hey, I'm uh, getting back the. Uh, I don't think I'm gonna play the curator. Um, I don't get the Vorak. I'm very sad. <laughs> uh, yeah. Anyhow, that was a funny draft uh, pack one. Um, yeah. So I'm not. Uh, this is this is a tough one because I mean I have these blue cards, but they don't excite me that much. And the Archfiend is an amazing bum. So I could kind of force it. It is a double caster, so it's not really something you splash. You have to basically be main color black to play the card. But there's an evolving adaptive. Now, if there wasn't this thing, I would just take the drowning icor here. That said, this one is splashable. So even if I end up blue green, I could play this thing. It also proliferates for my, you know, which I, which could be proliferate synergies. I don't have more more than the troller drake right now. Uh, the adaptive is so good though. Blue-green proliferate would have evolving adaptive, adaptive and the troller drake. Uh, maybe that's more exciting than trying to force the black here with the bomb. Okay, uh, so well, someone took the rare, so who knows? It could have been a, a bomb rare, or maybe it was just rare drafting. But this pack is pretty good. There's a scrap gotcha, which I'm absolutely gonna take. Great two drop, and then there's a hex gold slash and a vault charge for red drafters. I could have even considered taking taking you know the slash here if there wasn't a scrap coach and just splashing the two black red removal. But of course the the correct pick for my you know what for what I have here is definitely the two mana mana accelerator. Okay, I'm I'm passing some crazy stuff here now because I'm gonna pass another hex gold slash here. Uh, or, or, you know, I wouldn't need to uh, pass it. I could take it, but I have an infectious bite here. I should just take that. I don't think the poison counter will be that valuable in blue green. I guess you could have such a high amount of proliferating that if you get to deal some random poison, you might even win with the proliferate. But um, mostly this is just a decent removal spell. So let's take it. Now let's pass the red so that makes sure that um, that you know someone to my right is re in red and they will pass cards for my colors in the pack three. Now there's an Atraxa here. Again I do have a play set of these so there's no reason to pick this just to fill the completion uh, the, to fill the card set. Um, because the mesmerizing you could even consider the Dune Mover. I don't have that many twos here. Mesmerizing those works with the with the um because it proliferates its removal and uh uh, you know, I'm gonna take the dose. I, I'm gonna again pass this. I would need to play black and white too, and I don't have any good ways to 
splash yet. But the dose is really decent for the you know the proliferate things because when you combine a removal spell with a proliferating, it's it's quite valuable. All right. I mean, when you care about the proliferating. Here, uh, I do like the viral spawning, but like I said, I probably won't be such a poison deck, so the flashback is not that likely to happen. I have a couple of 3 mana 3 trees already, so I think the better pick here. I mean, you could maybe consider splashing for this guy at a 7 drop, but I think I'll just take the 2 drop because I do need the 2 drops here, and it's it's a fine one. Not amazing, but fine. Alright, so here, um, Gitaxian Raptor, probably over Skull Bomb here. Yeah, this is definitely not as strong stuff as I saw in pack one. Yet another 3 drop, but I suppose. I mean, I have a Drake and the Anctus, which I'm gonna play, and the Double Warak, which I'm gonna play, but this is the best card. I don't necessarily need another experimental augury here. And I would just want to have a. You know, I was saying 2 drop, but actually. Actually, also a four drop because I'm not playing this. I could just take the uh, lattice blade mantis here. Totally a very powerful four drop. So let's take it. And 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 okay, I cross synthesizer. This was the card I was looking for. There's another lattice blade mantis though, which is a, which is a bit sad, but <coughs> excuse me. I like the two drop more here. It's more important. To have your two drops than four drops, and my deck does synergize with this quite a lot. Um, I don't care about the <clears throat> another three drop. That's not too good. Pretty late uh, duelist of deep faith. I'll take the ascent, which I probably won't play. I won't play this two drop either. <clears throat> so I'm gonna have a. Am I gonna have a carnivorous canopy, which is a good sideboard card? This is a best of three draft. Copper long legs or. Another payoff for having some proliferating. I can try this, it's the most fun card. But um, it's not th that great, but looking at my mana curve, I think I can do it. I'll take this skull bomb over another of those tricks. Um, whatever, let's take the green card. I'm not gonna play probably neither of them. Okay, so pack three. Can I get more Warax? <laughs> All right, tablet of completion and the Tamiya's Immobilizer, they are really good. Uh, proliferate payoffs. There's also another synthesizer which I would be picking happily. Maybe the ruthless predation is good too. This pack actually does have does have um enough cards for my deck that I might get something back, like the ruthless predation or the synthesizer might come back. But is the immo immobilizer more important interaction than the tablet, which you know? With proliferating, you can actually rather quickly get to draw cards, and in the meanwhile, it can add some mana too. And of course, it can add mana even when when it can be drawing be drawing a card. But I think the immobilizer is quite darn good, and I have proliferating enough to make it make it um you know do the thing more times than just four. All right, so here there's a dingy tax, yes. Uh, artifact instant or sorcery. Let's see, how many of them do I have? Five. I don't actually know, I haven't really cut the, I mean, just all the stuff here. But that's a bunch of them. I mean, it's a 7 mana 5-5, five, five. that is the problem. What else does the pack have? Well, it doesn't have a lot, maybe, uh, I mean, I would take the other Gitaxe and Raptor over it. This also hoses the opponent, of course, counters their first. Uh, but it's a 7 drop, just a, such a small card. Uh, I'm gonna still take it. I don't necessarily need another Raptor, and uh, it's maybe a card I can sideboard in if I don't feel like playing it in the main deck. And of course, now I, I immediately get a reason to actually have picked the, pick the, you know, the where it is. Did I? Wait a minute. Didn't I pick one? Yeah, there it is. Git action Raptor. Because yeah, this thing comes with oil. I have some number of oil stuff, so the oil go to troll might be the pick here still. I don't think I care about the atmosphere as such. And do I want to have this thing? You know, I hope to get this back. I'll take the troll now. It, it's a, an oil payoff. And I have some oil here in the deck. Distorted curiosity. So basically divination. Maybe sometimes a cheap card draw when I get to have use an infectious bite. Or maybe hit once with the stalker. 
Um, anyway, there's not. I mean, uh, do I want to play a Titanic Crow in this deck? I don't think. I'll just take the Divination. It should be fine here. That's a very good payoff for the blue black proliferate deck, but um, uh, it's a bit too late to, for me to go there. I can take another f uh, Ruthless Predation. I don't really like the f two mana cantrip. And okay, I got the Predation Steward. I'm happy about it because I do have the Oil Goji Troll, so one other card that comes with oil. And Okay, Hex Cold Slash. I passed two of these in pack two and I'm, I'm getting a pick seven slash. Now there's a chance I could splash for the Red Crisp removal, but I don't think it's worth it. I, I actually think I'll just take the... i take the four drop here. Yeah, it's it's so much better than the two drop. I am a bit short on twos though, but I, I think the Lattice Blade Man is also being synergy with the old Gorgia to Troll. I, I wanted to take that. Alright, I take the only card for my colors, which is a sideboard card. I don't think I'm gonna main deck it. And here I see I cross synthesizer. This was the pack. Yeah, I did only get pack the synthesizer, but it's still good to get here. I don't know if I have that much proliferating in the end, but uh, you know the contagious forax, they can always uh, proliferate as well. I guess if I play the expanded sphere, well, I don't need that much mana. I mean, paying for mana just to proliferate twice. That's not worth it. Okay, I'm not playing double iron golfer. I'll just take the uncommon. Also, very good card. Who knows? Maybe I want to splash this <laughs> when I'm sideboarding something. Oh, what? Well, okay, I mean, let's take two hover wings and there's also a duelist. This, I don't know, now white was open in this pack. Green, not so much. Well, weird one. Very weird. Given what how open and green was in pack one, I'm a bit disappointed about what happened now. Fine, fine, fine. I guess I could have taken a duress. There's like a very small chance you would sideboard an off off color duress against something, but it's it's super unlikely. Hmm. Okay, let's now cut the archfiend and the world charge. And now I'm gonna just cut two mazes mantles easily. Anything that's easy to cut as pirates ascent. Um. Uh, I think I'll cut the seven drop from the main deck at least, and the engulfer. I would try to maybe play the. Blister as well. So those were the easy cards. I'm still at 26 cards. First of all, I want to actually see how much proliferate to have because I don't think I in the end in the end have that much. But um, yeah, this is actually a very low amount. I got, got one augury and one dose. So this is not exactly the kind of deck that really goes off with proliferating. So given that I took the immobilizer over the Two mana thing that can draw you cards. Mm, I don't know. Immobilizer is still good even if you have only four uses for it. So I don't think that was such a bad draw. Plus it is synergy with the old gods draw because it comes with oil and this is only this case about any permanent that has an oil counter. So actually if I do that oil counter. So this is now well this is a bunch of cards, maybe not all have oil counters, but I think most of them do. Yeah. The only one that doesn't have an oil counter is actually the troll itself, so it's gonna be easy to draw a card with this thing, right? Okay then. Um, some cards. I think the surgical skull bomb is the easy card here. The other cards are just, you know, more useful. How many two mana creatures I have? I should have maybe checked that one too. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, I, I like six. I do have two one mana creatures too, so I could see not playing the Brand Blight Stalker. It's not really doing much for the. I mean, it's not really synergy piece at all with the deck. I have a couple of Infectious Bites, and um, one thing that cares about uh, the opponent being corrupted. And I have not even that much of proliferating, so I'm never going to poison the opponent. So this is just a 2 mana 3 one. I mean uh, this one. So it's gonna go away, because I have these two 1 drops here. Uh, I can leave with only 5. 5 2 drops here. 
I have some defensive three drops after all, so even if I miss my two drop entirely, uh, if I have, a, have one of these, this is a four toughness, three drop, four toughness, uh, three drop here, and a couple of Warrocks, which, you know, they are going to trade with anything the opponent has, has played up until uh, turn uh, three, and if you get a land, which you usually do get, uh, you don't even mind trading this guy on a two drop, because you still need a card there. So I think a 5-2 drops is going to be fine with these 1 drops. And uh, uh, the question is, is this going to be a 16 land deck? Now this is a best of 3 event, so there's no starting hand algorithm. Um, because in best of 1 you might be like a slightly more uh, willing to play with uh, 16 lands. Because you are going to have a more good starting hands. I have a double Wurak and the Rustvine. Cultivator and the experimental auger, which all can, you know, uh, get me more mana in one way or other. And since I do have only one six mana card, two five mana cards, three four mana cards, that is total of six cards. So this would be now 18 cards I can cast with uh, at most. I mean, if I have only three mana, assuming. You know, of course, I can't cast this double casters if I have forest, forest, island, but, you know, still. Or maybe I can if I have a cultivator on tapping the island. Mm. Yeah, I feel like I could play with just a 16 here. I have only one of the sacrificable lands. If I had, like, maybe three, that then it would be, like, a slightly more of a reason to maybe cut to 23 spells. But the fact is, I just don't want to, you know... I don't want to cut anything here. I think all of these cards, I, I could maybe cut the blisters, but I want to try how it works. Um, I don't have a lot of oil, but you know, this comes with an oil counter regardless. So when it dies, I get to draw one card. It is a kind of a two for one. The problem is that six mana four fours are not so great if you are you know, somehow defensive. But then again, if you are not, this is a four power flyer and four toughness flyer, of course. So if you can stabilize other ways. And maybe this deck has a w means to stabilize somehow. You could have this as a win condition of some kind. Um, yeah, I'll try with the 16 lands. I think with, uh, with four cards that help me get more mana, that cost at most three. Uh, also, there's the distorted curiosity. So let's take five, because if I can cast this, uh, drone two cards make it at least easier to hit my land drops further. So, oh, plus there's an armored scrap gorger, which I totally forgot. Also taps for mana. Now, of course, these creatures can get removed, but not always. Oh, fine. I'm going to play uh, uh, 8 plus 8. Uh, so total of 16 lands only. Yeah, there's no reason to favor either blue or green. Both have double casters. I have more green cards, and my mana fixing is green. Uh, so, yeah. I still want to play 8 blue because of these double caster blue cards in here. Right, right, right. So let's um, gonna do some other favorite land here. Now I have used enough of this. Um, no, that wasn't what I was trying to do. I've used enough of these latest set land. So this set bleed, eight of those and um, seven of those. Okay, blue, green, not exactly proliferate, but you know, <laughs> I guess it's. Maybe there's not really a theme here. Is that good enough? I don't know. We will see. On the play with a very nice hand. Of course, this hand doesn't do anything. It has to draw some cards that do some business. But of course, I have a lot of those in my deck. Opponent is mulliganing here. They kept six. And okay, skull bomb. Okay, well there is already something decent to play. I could attack for one, but um, you know I could draw a four drop, and it would be sad to not being able to play it right away. Um, let's play this first. I don't know why. Two black. I guess they can have the exile. 
exile thing. I don't think they would have exiled those even if I attacked first. So no reason to proliferate. Get the second blue. I mean, I, ha I had t technically one reason to proliferate. I'm gonna attack now, um, because this could have gotten another counter. But it's not really relevant because I don't have anything expensive. I can untap now one land if I'm if I draw a. Uh, I can run in Icro, sure. If I draw something expensive, like a, well, basically five drop, I can still use this. Okay, I have a couple of removal spells. The Predation doesn't do much though with these one power guys. Um, they had to use the. So this was the best play available. I guess they are missing the second color. Uh, I, I believe if they are missing the second color, they really should crack the skull bomb for a card. I mean, there's no creature card in the graveyard. Yeah, this is a two for one late in the game, but um, are they really willing to. Oh, look at this. I've actually got it. And I have the oil here. Wow. Oh, but. Ah, uh, punished. No. Of course, if I untap something. Yeah, I can't play it now. Darn it. <laughs> I mean, I want to draw the card from here. I can't do it if I untap the land because that's my last oil counter there. Sure, sure. But yeah, they should definitely crack this skull bomb here now if they are missing. I mean, unless they're mono black. Don't play a Phyrexian Obliterator. Phew, it was a four, four drop creature, but it's like, gladly not the nasty one. Okay, so uh, I don't want to start taking poison here. But um, I don't have mana to play this and kill it right now. Uh, but I, I suppose I can. They can get it back, but that's slow. Regardless, I'm just gonna play the troll now. Get my card, and of course, I won't be attacking. Oh, blister zoa. Let's see how that can. Oh, I can even proliferate another counter on it. Well, yeah, they, of course, I don't. They don't have a good attack if they, unless they have a trick. But if I mean, if they do attack here, that means like they have the death touch trick, and I wouldn't be double blocking it. But of course, they didn't want to. I mean, they didn't have it, so so uh, this was very good for me. Raptor, another thing that can be proliferated. Oh, it would be actually just a fine thing to kill one with the predation and tap down the other one, but I'm not gonna play the dose before I have the blister zoa here. So let's play the blister zoa then. Next then I might even raptor and dose to get another oil for this thing. Okay, so it seems like they are mono black actually. Took some life loss there. For the refills, they're refilling more. Okay, so now I at least have the four power flyer, which can threaten their life total here. They have no attacks here into this board. Okay, so I think. So I have eight mana available, which means I can cast everything here. Uh, mono black doesn't have mass removal, so that can punish me. So I should just actually do this. Should just do it. So they are at fourteen, they take here. 9 go down to 5 with no blockers to this massive board. I have a lot of damage in the air, so yeah. Well, opponent Mulligan, of course. Uh, their first play was Drowning Icron by 3 drop, and they had a couple of head cleavers. So the head cleavers are annoying to block if they have them. Uh, the, the trick that keeps death touch and uh, uh, indestructible. I just don't have any way to really punish that. Um, I don't have any instant speed bounce. Uh, I do have a couple of infectious bites. If I have a big enough creatures, yeah, then I can punish. Um, so anything here is bad. I, I mean, yeah, that was a question actually, uh, and I don't think there is even the long legs is fine. Is this can help contribute into a double block of the head cleaver. 
and you know the proliferating can matter in this deck definitely. But I could play the Stalker, although this Stalker is not so good against a 2-4. Now actually I could play the Maze's Mantle here, because this is a good blocker on, on my 3-3s, three my 3-4s. Three uh, anything else here? Yeah, I, I guess I could not play the long legs. I mean, they could play the two mana one one flyer with toxic one, of course. I would want to have this against that, but I didn't see one. So I think I'm actually playing one of these Miran's mantles. This sorry, Mage's mantles, of course. Uh, that can help push through the two four. If that's even something I need, I have flyers in the deck, and I have a four three, which becomes a five four. I don't necessarily need to push through them, but I'll still have it here or instead of the 1-3. They, at least they weren't aggressive in that game, so who knows? Maybe they are not aggressive in the following game either. But I did cut one of two drop, so I, it's made, it made lower chance to, to have an early play here, but let's hope I don't get punished. Um, yeah, I'm, I kind of have to keep this. Because I can play the Anctus. Other blue creatures you can't have. Yeah, I mean, this could be just horrible, but... I mean, if they go 2-drop, 3-drop. But, I mean, I just sideboarded out a 2-drop, so... I guess I'll see now. At least no 1-drop. The land wasn't the worst, because I do have a 6-drop here, but of course I'd rather get some... Okay, are they playing one color? Okay, well, there's a two mana card, sadly. Okay, so they actually... Yeah, they're mono black, but they're playing this as a, you know, toxic two drop. And it, it can still, you know, get a land, of course. Hey, that's a bit awkward timing here. Um, I mean, if they need a land drop, they can get a swamp. It doesn't have to fix your colors. Alright, so... So, so, so. I feel like I can here just uh, because if I, I can play this, of course, it can in theory just block them, the block, block them both. Problem is if they do have a removal, I go to three poison, thirteen life, and I would rather play this before any other creature. So I'm actually doing this and um, doing this before they untap. I will take three damage and one poison there. And then when I play the Anctus, that this becomes a 2-2, and this is a 2-4, so I have two blockers on the Hive Master. And they don't have a fourth land for the, you know, for the Menace Guy. I have a dose for a Menace Guy, of course. Okay, I have to sack that. That's fine. Let's hope they don't have a lot of more removal. Hey, look at that. I could actually, because I did make one poison, uh, I have one proliferating effect, so if I have a just... This is only other artifact. Yeah, it doesn't. There's no point changing this because you can change this one into a blue artifact. Well, no, no, it is already an artifact creature. Yeah, sorry. There's no point using this on itself. Scrap trap. Okay, I guess I have to dose that guy. They probably would have played the. Yeah, they, I'm pretty sure they would have played the head cleaver if they had that. But yeah, I'm, I'm happy to dose that. Hopefully they don't have the removal spell that sacrifices. Anyway, synthesizer into... So this first of all, when it becomes tapped, any blue creature I have, when it becomes tapped, loot. Alright. Could be nice, but before we do any of that, I'm gonna just dose this guy. A couple of oil on the synthesizer, they go to two poison. And now, you know, I, I now use my proliferating effect before having them. Before having them, you know, them. <sighs> Blisters are down, that's what I was trying to say. Okay, so they, they removed my thing with a pretty good removal spell. They go... Well, I'm not jumping here. So let's hope to draw land, I guess. Well, this is <laughs> actually better, so... So thank you for that. Okay. Uh, am I ever gonna jump here? Even if they deal with the 3 4? I don't think so. Did 
They have removed two of my guys. Do they have more removal? At least they are digging for more cards now. They still can have more removal, of course. Now there's the head cleaver. I can't really take any any uh, damage that deals me poison. That's just not gonna bode well for me. But I have the mirror's mantle here. So why, why do I say that? Is that a card? Mirror's mantle? It has to be. And I'm just remembering it from some other set. Or maybe from this set. Maze's mantle. I can play that, of course. It's another creature, so it... Yeah, okay. This is fine. I, I'd rather clear up the, the trick here. And then play the curiosity. There's still a chance I'm actually gonna get them a third poison. Not that it matters. I can just play cast a divination. Okay, another head cleaver. I don't think they have a good attack. Unless they have a trick, of course. Then they would have a good attack. So sadly, I'm not gonna use the mantle now. I have six mana now. I really want to use this as a, a response to something. Um, six mana. So if I do play the curiosity now. I think I just have to play the lattice blade mantis. I know I could play the blister as well. But the problem with that is that I lose my scrap culture. Blocker, it's actually gonna contribute to these many guys blocking the three toughness matters against those. I guess they can't really. Yeah, okay, I'm okay. So I'm, I'm gonna do this instead. Uh, this this leaves me more blockers after all. But this could be bad. I could take the lethal poison here if they have a trick. If they attack with everything, that's. I mean, I can't really, you know, just take the damage here. So that means I have to. Lose my guys to the, you know, indestructible death that's trick. I hope they don't have two of them. If they have two of them, I just lose the game. But yeah, this is pretty easy, of course. This is the only way that makes my blocks in, in any way reasonable. I am assuming to lose at least two of my guys. Hopefully they lose the one of their... Okay, there's one of immortality. How about the second one? So this is two for two now. They chose to actually... Okay, I should, should actually get mana here. Exile something from their graveyard. They had a... They had a way to return something. Well, there's not much, but I guess this is... They had a skull bomb. So, okay, they lost two cards because they, of course, lost their tricks. I lost two creatures, so that was a two for two. And they have more of those. All right. Um, I'm still in the game, of course. It's time to play the blister zoa. And now they can, you know, force if they attack with everything. Oh no, I can I can block the hive master and one of these guys. It's not not so bad. No. But I'm gonna take two poison. I had, I'm totally tapped out. So if they really want to make me go to seven, they can sacrifice a head cleaver and do that. Okay, that's good news. Hopefully they don't have any interaction for the 4 mana they have. Well, 4 mana is a lot of mana for so if they do have interaction, they of course have the mana to cast it. Alright, so now... I'm still... <laughs> not in the greatest shape of all times, but... I'm gonna play this before I cast this curiosity. Now, do I want to... Yeah, the problem here is that I can now attack with everything. I can... No, I can still block these guys. I think I need to leave the mantle up this time. Because I, I, I need to make these guys big enough to actually kill something when they block. And even with the curiosity... This only becomes... I mean, it doesn't become a 3-3 yet. I need two non-creatures. Of course, this is a pretty, pretty, pretty awkward if they don't attack. And then, you know, I all, all again... Um, didn't use my mana, but... I mean, let's say I draw a land. I can play at the Curiosity next turn and still have mana up for the mantle. What I'm really scared about it is them having more of these offering mortalities. 
Okay, well, they have a lot of <laughs> those threes and four drops of the same kind. But I can hold this back. They don't have a good attack right now. Problem is, neither do I. Alright, so... I could actually proliferate with this thing, then this is a two mana. Yeah, I don't need a land here. Um, although... Yeah, I'm gonna draw two cards with one blue, so I can still hit a land for the Mace's Mantle here. So I should, um... Use this mana. And, um... Uh, did I make a... No, I didn't make a mistake. I'm gonna decline here. Um, I needed to proliferate first to to get them corrupted. But of course, um, now this Cinderella head doesn't get a... Uh, I, I couldn't proliferate here, but it's fine. Here, now the second one is a 3-3. Three, three. Infectious Bite is amazing. Alright, so can I actually attack now? Because of the bite, that is. So, if I bite a head cleaver here, I basically need five blockers for them to. Yeah, well, I guess I don't mind if they. So, if I attack with the blisters and they attack with everything, I have only four blockers to their five. I can kill, you know, a head cleaver here. And I can block. I have to take steal a bunch of poison here but I need to win before they actually get to push more poison for me against me maybe I'm actually doing like this I'm gonna attack with the unblockable three power guy and leave the blister so to block so you know if he dies at, at least I get to draw two cards but now they could actually go for it they will lose a lot of guys though yeah, that's at least I think the most reasonable choice for them so before anything, I'll just um, go and make some blocks here. So I'm gonna eat this, eat... Um, okay, let's see. I'm gonna block one of these guys. Yeah, so this block's here and this, block's, this block here. And I'm taking three poison now. But I have, of course, a response first. So let's see now what happens when, when this... So they, they do they do have a priority, so they have something. No, no, sorry, that wasn't that. That was the assign uh, choosing the blocker queue. Okay, they this only gives hexproof if it, if it has toxic. That's really annoying. Why would they let that happen though? I mean, why would they do that now? And I don't even know. Anyhow, let's let's do this. So I, I don't get to draw the cards, but then again, they deal only one poison and they lose a bunch of guys and I lost nothing, except the one they exiled. And I still have the mantle here. Now they don't have anything that has um, menace. They actually have only three poison here, so let's see, if I attack with everything with the mantle, that's nine, ten, it's twelve, this doesn't... Yeah, it is, is, isn't going to become a 3-3 base, so it's actually not lethal. It's 12 damage I can deal here. So, question is, am I willing to... I'm willing to make a two-turn clock here. I'm, I'm actually doing like this. I don't know, like this. So I'm going to block the 1-1 one, one with the 1-3 and 3-2 uh, with the 3-4 and then I take one poison here. And this time, this this way they go to they go to 8 and I have a potentially a lethal attack coming up. If I get this guy, you know, if I draw a non-creature that is. Like, because this then this, this would be 2-3-3 three, three unblockables with plus 2 plus 2. That's exactly 8. Assuming they don't have more, you know, removal. They have two anoint with afflictions. Sealdred's edict. They can't really wait because this these synthesizers of course will win the late game. So they do have the obliterator. That is probably a little too late for them though. If that's the only play they have. If they are holding like land. They don't have a good attack now. 
they would lose two creatures. And this can't block my unblockables. So they have three blockers, but of course they do have blockers on these guys. So if I draw a non-creature, I can threaten lethal, unless they have like yet another anoint with affliction. I think if they had, they would have used it. I'm pretty sure of that. Can I have something expensive that makes me want to use this right now? I don't think so. Okay, so I can of course take the five damage here. That doesn't matter at all. And since I don't have a lethal attack now, I'm just going to attack with this guy. And not much really change it. Now next turn it's the mentally with the synthesizer will be lethal here. I could actually even <laughs> sacrifice five lands here, which is pretty funny, but I'm not gonna double block. If they I mean they are not gonna deal seven extra here. So Well, let's see what I draw first. Samia's immobilizer. Now that's a good one. I'll definitely do that. And 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 I can tap die. I can I can force a lethal attack here without. Yeah, I'm, I'm I think I'm gonna just win here. So I will do it like this and I will do like uh you know Because I, okay, maybe I didn't need to do. Okay, yeah, uh, I was. I would have been a fool, fool guy to to do this before blocks. Because of course, if they do block the synthesizer here, they are facing what nine damage, and I can still add two to that. Uh, so of course, I should have just. I, mean, I, I, I was just, you know, processing it before they considered it. So I wouldn't have played this yet. I would have let them go to blocks. You know, block probably something else than a 1-3 with this guy. And then then uh, after blocks, if they, of course, they need instants there too. And I would have just, you know, in, in that case, just enhanced, for example, any of my three powers. Basically, any of my guys would be lethal with the mantle. So there's going to be at least three unblockables. Maybe they use an instant to deal one, one with one of them, even if they have two instants to deal with two of them. Uh, then I could still win with the mantle. So, yeah. Well, this is not a keep. This is, but what is the card I don't need here? I feel like it might even be the immobilizer here. It's a full mana card. These are, the rest of these are cheaper. I do need the double blue for the Anctus, but and, and the dose, but I think I just have to gamble, gamble for it. Immobilizer goes away. The predation can actually be good with the with, with both the Anctus and the uh, Troll Rig. So let's see if I can hit my island. Mm. Well, I mean, first of all, Forest will be fine enough because I can still play the Drake here. And I draw two four drops, so classic Mulligan. Uh, one lander into a two lander which you keep and then don't hit the third land drop, that is. Gonna be nasty, especially when I'm, of course, in this format, people play. <laughs> and I have a 1 1 here. Early drops here. But that was a little bit unlucky. I can still, you know, survive here if they don't have a. If they have, a, like, a, not an ideal curve out. It is very unlikely, though. But I can kill the Kemba car, okay. Scratch that. Uh, I guess this thing can actually start making 2 2s, if nothing else. So, I don't think I can really. Yeah. I go to 9 now. And they still have 4 cards. <laughs> yep. Do they have a 2 mana play there? Yes, they do. So, let's try. Okay, I now I draw the lands. I don't know if I would have won this, even if I hit my curve here. Uh, this is sadly 
very good card, but uh, it's a three toughness four drop, and it trades with uh, all of, almost everything. So now I'm gonna. So they can, yeah. What's their play? They can make the both the duelist and the Kemba into a three three. I think that's what they should do. Okay, well, I mean that makes no sense. I can just block here, right? Why not make the Kemba? Okay, doesn't really matter. Uh, so I have to. I mean, they have of course a lot of attackers. The extra one one size is huge, of course, in board states like this. So yes, I can kill the sentry, and uh, I will have a one one. Now. And I can use the mesmerizing dose after that. Sadly, I can't. If I could also play the adaptive here before that, maybe there was like a chance. This doesn't do really much. Um, so if I kill the sentry and then dose the uh, duelist, I mean, I guess that's what I have to do. No, I have to dose the basilic as effort, of course. I mean, I guess maybe not because this will grow, perhaps. Um, don't know though. If I could kill this guy, that would be perfect, but I cannot. So if I do this. Yeah, I guess I am gonna do this after all. I mean, this Drake becomes a 3 3, but I think I need it to become even bigger. Yeah, I can I can do this because I, I they, are, they are not blocking here. So. I guess if they have just nothing in their hand, especially no artifacts, uh, well, that that was the opposite of nothing. Uh, if they have a land drop here to equip that thing as well, because I can take three here still, but if they have, although they didn't have a land drop, well, that's not good news either. So I think I have to take the three here because I would trade with this guy. I don't think I can afford to. They can move around the equipment though. It, this is really difficult. Yeah, I can trade one of my guys on this. Do I have to? Fine, I guess I have to. <laughs> or maybe they have a trick because they, they didn't have a land drop. I think they would have just easily. Move, well, we move the equipment if they had a land drop. So now, of course, no point attacking. They will just block with the 5-3. That's not worth it. Um, and the Kemba, yeah, this this can spawn more two twos. Yeah, I mean the fact they have the Kemba, I still can draw a removal for it. I'm, I have two infectious bites here, but but they have too many creatures. I'm at six life, and they can, yeah, this is a six four now, which I have to you know block with this guy. Very horrible thing. I mean, is there a way? I mean, maybe if I now drew an Infectious Bite, I kill here. No, I don't have big enough creatures to block all this. They have the Wolfsock Splitter to make, you know. I think they just have a little attack because of the Menace guy. They can make that into a 4-3 Menace. If I double block it, I lose to these other guys. That's enough damage at 7. If I don't double block it, well, you know, I take 4 from this guy and then I can't block enough of these others to, to save myself. So, yeah. Um, anything in here? Cheap trick could be it. The blister zoa is not the kind of card that is good in in these matchups. Skull bomb is okay with them for mirror and stuff, so I can bounce the I can bounce the tokens. So that is actually worth it. I'm going to have the skull bomb. How about the ascent here? Do does my um? Come on. Where is it? Wait a minute. Did I cut this during deck building or did I make some I don't even actually understand now. I thought I had this in my deck. Didn't I sideboard this out in the previous game? 
Did I click something funny here? Uh, maybe I did cut this in deck building. I actually don't know anymore. Yeah, I think... Well, it doesn't matter. No, I don't think I have any cards I don't want to have here. Yeah, I want to play the all this stuff. I somehow thought I'm, I have this in my deck, but I don't. Okay. No, no, I think I... Oh, yeah, no, the, I cut this in deck building and the, this thing I cut in the previous uh, match. Yeah, yeah, that's right. That's right. So, yeah, because I was about to think if I want to play this guy. Well, um... As in plus one plus three could you know matter here. The fact that I can get a flyer could matter, but there's just no real you know there's no real card I wanna cut here. I'm I'm just gonna ship this. If I win the next game it goes to game three, maybe I can reevaluate, you know, being on the draw. Could make me want to play the plus one plus three trick. Let's see if I can keep a good starting hand and well, I don't have anything that grows the adaptive here, but at least it is a hand with potential with correct draws. You know, any creature, for instance, makes this into a 2-2, two -two, and I can play most of my creatures with the lands here. Okay, that makes it into a 2-2. Two -two. Plus now, I have two things that can have oil, so... I Oligoji Troll will be drawing me a card, and this allows me to cast a double blue spell. Not yet on the next turn. Okay, they kept it to Mountain Mountain Hand at 7. Never drew anything, really. Um, I'm really tempted just to... Uh, just to... Yeah, I'm actually gonna attack here now. Because now the thing is that... Let's say they kill the Evolving Adaptive. I can still, on the next turn... Uh, put a counter on the cultivator and just use you, you know use five lands to cast a troll. So I will be drawing the card here. But yeah, they just kept a risky hand and didn't get get there. All right. So now on the on the draw, will I play the ascent here? Because it is a it is a one mana trick that can you know first of all it can counter some of their tricks, and then of course it can be a one mana way to you know turn a trade into an non trade so let's say my Warak is you know blocking some some of the guy that has three power i can save my effectively by playing this in this situation means that i get to one mana three three when i get to save my Warak. and that could matter that tempo can matter in these matchups a lot i will be on the draw now so i really kind of want to play this but what is the most useless card here I still want to play the mantises because these are quite good in actually applying pressure i need to apply pressure to win the game so it's not just all about stabilizing. Sadly, I just think all the cards here are really good. I mean, the experimental augury, it's just a, it does some stuff in my deck. I, I, I do like the divination more than the augury still. Ah, maybe the two mana do nothing is going to be the cut and i'd rather play the ascent that can affect the board yeah let's do that mm, well they mulligan now and if i just had a forest here it's too risky i'm gonna mulligan too all right, well, these had... Oh, they go to five. Well, I definitely don't go to five. I have a pretty good hand. I mean, actually, I think I can cut a forest here. Yeah, this might die. But flooding out is one way to lose. I have... A, with three lands, I can cast most of my, you know, spells anyway. So I think I'm gonna do this. But of course, if they don't have interaction on the scrap court, that means I can play this on turn four. Uh, but only if there is something in the graveyard, this will have oil. So let's see if I can. <laughs> well, so far nothing. No evolving bulbs. Can't deal with that. Uh...
Yeah, this can't pick oil without stuff in the graveyard. Now I can crack the hunter maze, but that would be really crazy stuff. Because I have that that's that equals missing a land drop. I mean, I think I just have to dose this guy to buy some time here. Yeah, this... yeah. The predation... I, I really hope they play something with one toughness so I could use the predation and pick an oil here. Oh man, that's that's a good value for them. Well, they did mulligan to 5, so let... and I did mulligan to 6 and I'm on the draw, so... It's kind of even still card-wise, and this will draw me a card, hopefully. Um, well, that, the good news is I can actually get an oil here now, because I can exile my own thing. So that, that's the good news, if, if something good could have come out of that. So now I'll play my troll here. Okay, so now... See if they attack. They could attack. It's a free attack. They could have actually. Well, maybe they don't want to for me to attack. Oh, they are actually gonna sacrifice the one one here. Sure, to deal three damage and one poison. I don't think the poison matters, but all right. So I guess I'll just kill. The Attendant. Now it's bigger than this. This has menace and makes their equipment, but uh, they have enough mana to cast everything. So yeah, this is what I'm going to do. They are tapped out, so. And now I can use the Scrap Gorger to get more. Oh, well, it's going to be a 3-3 now. I don't think the Immobilizer right now makes sense. I'll just play my creature here. I should get priorities with this guy up, so I don't have to make, put any stops. So I can, at the end of their turn, you know, tap this to eat a thing, a thing from the graveyard. Another Aspirant. But they're not opponent did Mulligan to 5. That's the reason they are now at, you know, no cards in hand. So that's not gonna do anything here. Well, I guess it's they can trade with the Steward, but if they want to do that, I'm actually happy to trade my Steward. It has some utility late in the game, but this is just fine. This is totally fine. That's not the best one, but... So they could double block if I attack with the troll. I could just attack with the scrap gorger, actually. Because I do have a double block on the menace guy. Yeah, I don't mind trading the scrap gorger with the aspirant here. It's just a 3 3. I don't need the mana for anything. So let's attack. No, no, no. I want to attack. I could also have a 3k, so it would be extremely risky for them to make the double block. Plus the at 20, why would they risk it? So let's play this thing and let's play the immobilizer. And as annoying as it is, um, I maybe should play the land because I might crack the maze, but I still don't want to do that. I don't want to let them know that I have nothing in my hand. Helm is gonna trigger the assimilation thing, but my 3 4 is just too massive for them to do anything here. I guess it not, that's not exactly true, because they can now actually equip this, make it into a 3-5, and then if I double block it, I lose my cultivator for nothing. So now the question is, do I want to tap it? I think I can take 3 here. Although if I do tap it, uh, because it has Vigilance now, it will be untapped. I can push with the Scrap Gorger again, tra trading with the Duelist here. 
I'm actually going to do it now. They can move around this equipment, but it doesn't matter much because I can still trade with the scrap culture here. Now I need my four drops. Four drops that can attack as a 5-4. I also have the flyer. Yeah, I actually forgot, but I have the blue one blue flyer still, still in No, more than one, but I have the five drop flyer, which is which says that the draw and discard when it ETB, so I should keep a land in my hand. Anyway, now that I drew another island, I should crack this. This thing first. Okay, well, that's something. Um... Still, am I willing to trade? I know I could attack with both these guys, but that's that's not really what I want to do. Um, they would. Uh, this would trade with the duelist of the deep faith. That's the thing here. But I guess I can do that trade. Okay, now of course they can. They are free to attack. They didn't attack. And there it is, the Fisher. Great draw. Excellent draw. There's no attacks for me right now. Okay, do I wanna untap? Yeah, I will untap that. As long as they don't have a removal on the fish here, I will not need to. I mean, I could tap this down now and attack with a 3-4 as well. Uh, I mean, I guess I can do it once. I still have two counters here. Let's push here while we can. Because this is gonna be... I mean, if they block with that thing, that's really great. And now this is gonna be a lot of... Pressure from the air. They basically need to draw their... You know, they have the burn spell that deals three. I saw it in game one. There it is. There it is. But... I'm mean, not in any trouble here because of course they have... A <laughs> I mean, I'm winning the race here easily if, if they start attacking. Unctus. Well... Um, let's use the green for, for that. I don't need green for anything. So this can now make my other guys... Well, yeah, first of all, this will have five toughness, it won't die. So I'm gonna make that guy into... I'm gonna... I could have played life, but... Because I'm gonna loot now. When this becomes tapped, draw a card, discard a card. And then now it's an artifact, so it also gets plus one, plus one. Uh, no reason to do that for anything else, so let's just attack. And I had to use this now, it's activate only as a sorcery, so you have to do it in the main phase. But now let's loot this, some useless lands away. Um, blue creatures, yeah, it doesn't affect the Tamiya's immobilizer, but they have, yeah, they don't have anything in their hand, so they, or at least nothing that helps them now. So Onctus was a really good one. I think this should be mostly a win, unless they have the, you know, a white sun's twilight. Land, drop a land, blow everything up, have five mites. That's of course the reset button that white has access to, although the Another one is the Emperor Planeswalker that can kill all but one of my guys, and they get to choose who is going to be left. But yeah, they had nothing, and uh, that was another match win. Okay, how about that for uh, starting hand? I have had one lander, I have had not a six lander in this event. Opponent kept seven, they are on the play. Let's mull that. Okay, I haven't actually played my Vorax, but I have only two of them in my deck. I could have three if I drafted the pack one. 
in a little bit different way. Now this is actually a, a not an easy decision because of course you really want to just make sure you have the Vorak on turn 3. I have no two drops in this hand. And these are both good and this Vorak most likely finds a land for them if I haven't drawn a fourth land otherwise. Then again this is my only interaction spell and uh, with this lattice blade mantis I can you know make them it's a very good good I mean basically my five five battles with one of their guys or this is becoming a four five so it can kill you know pretty much most of the things with the ruthless predation so I'm on the draw now and the question is do I want to gamble on drawing a land for the warak before turn three or I mean at latest on turn three that is three draw steps. My deck has 16 lands. And there are 13 now in the top or whatever. If I put one on my on the bottom, that doesn't of course be drawn. So 13 lands out of 33 cards basically. Three times. I think I have to gamble now a little bit. If I don't draw a land in three draw steps, so be it. I also have two creatures that can add me mana. A one drop and a two drop. They have a they have mana accelerating. Okay, well I can kill that with their predation and I can block it if they have no use for the mana, so I, if they attack I can block. And I would block, I would let them use the trick to get deal with the synthesizer. Yeah, that means they don't have a three drop for this turn at least. Now all I need is a land. Yep, they get a card, but that's something I need to make them use at some point anyway. And here I didn't get punished. That was close, but I didn't get punished. And I even got the fourth land. So this is great. But I did mulligan a six lander, so now we are only even. In t well, actually they get, got a two for one there, but I mean... I'm just happy to have the Warak here. It can block the convert again. They actually ossificate that. Sure. I mean, they, they really want to deal with but two damage and one poison. So that means they don't have a four drop there. I'm um, just okay. Do they have a counter spell there? <clears throat> that would be a reason to leave two mana up. I mean, they, they, I mean this taps for mana. This could, they could have had even a five drop in there. I mean, they could have cast a five drop. The three three does nothing. So if they have a counter spell, I would rather play the Cultivator and, and the Drake. But I mean, I'm just gonna play this, whatever. No counter spells, no nothing. So are they flooding out because they didn't have a 5 mana spell on the previous turn? Mm, this thing gets, creates those annoying mites. Okay, they do it in the main phase, why? I don't understand, but because this is not an activate as a sorcery. Alright, um... Well... Just play another you know, Lattice Blade Mantis, they didn't have anything for the first one. I don't need the mana that much. I can cast everything here, maybe I can't... Well, once I draw one more land, I can double spell a Drake into one of these spells. The, the, the thing I'm thinking about here is, should I untap this guy or not? I don't think I should now untap. Because I, these coil counters are pretty good when it can matter when they have a good block when this is a 4-3, but not a good block when it's a 5-4. And I have another blocker here. Besides, I'm not sure I care about blue-white. I guess with, with the Mirex out, I should care about get, taking poison here. But I mean, if they deal with this Mantis, whatever, let, let them use another removal spell. I mean, pump spell or something. Play it on slot. I mean, that's still good for me, and they're gonna lose their team. That was their best. That's not that's not how you win the game. All right, so still I don't think I'm gonna untap this guy. I'm I'm gonna have another blocker here. Cultivator in the Drake here. Yeah, they played it onslaught. I mean, I guess they just. They have mostly pump spells, so they the only thing they can do is just is just uh, okay. They vanish, make that go away. <laughs> sure, that's all the well, the entire turn almost. Skull bomb kind of sadly reset the troller deck, so I shouldn't really. 
that's nice too. I shouldn't really go out of my way to, well, I, I, I to, to, you know, make, make it bigger with these things, but it's not like I'm gonna use a removal spell on the one one there. Um, what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna attack for one here. Play the adaptive. Because I need this to, you know, get an oil counter so I can play my troll. Okay, they are pretty forced to just to bounce something to draw a card because they are flooding out. Flooding out there, they definitely are. That has been bounced. They get the card. Flesh cutter. Well, that's actually a reason to use use my um infectious bite here. And um, troll or Drake? Huh. Because I, I have to use now this oil counter to play the troll, troll, but of course this thing has a... Yeah, I think it is the thing I'm gonna do. Maybe I even hit a land drop here. Not that I need it anymore. Alright, so Mirex with the Flesh Cutter can, you know, do some nasty work in a different kind of board state, not here. The fact that the tokens can't block is really not gonna be great for them. Okay, so... Well, they could have a re uh, another pump spell, because... I kind of want to play the Drake and the Predation. But the safer would be to, pl would be to play the Dose. Sadly, I can't play my Drake before the Dose. I'm not sure if it's even that necessary. I think I'm gonna do the safe play, because I feel like they have a pump spell here still. I mean, uh, I mean the, the thing that could wreck me, if they don't have it, I think I still win. But if they do have a pump spell and I go with the Predation, that's a little bit annoying. So I'm gonna sacrifice some value here now. Um, yeah, there's no point playing the long legs first. But the, I should have... No, actually I'm gonna attack for one with this guy. Yeah. Oh, but I should... I messed up. I should have played this because the adaptive cares about, you know, toughness as well. This would be a 4-4 now. I should have played the 1-3 to make this into a 3-3 and then proliferate. But it's probably not gonna matter, but still... <laughs> it... Yeah, it's probably not gonna matter. Even if they have a board wipe here, it doesn't matter if they were at one or two. Okay, well, that thing cannot block, so let's just go. I have a bunch of lethal attackers. I guess I could have played the Predation to kill this guy just to, you know, make this also one of my one power guys lethal, but you know, I mean, it's not like they're gonna be able to do something with this board with four mana and instant speed effects. Alright, so uh um don't know. Is there something I should sideboard in? There has there's an ossification. So yeah if I took the sideboard uh destroy target artifact enchantment or flying thing I would definitely have that but I didn't pick that card. Do I care about the Blister Zoa in this matchup? They can exile it with this thing, they can exile it with the ossification. It's a little bit unreliable, so I'm gonna cut it for something, you know, what exactly. I guess this skull bomb is never gonna be bad. I didn't see any aura based removal, doesn't mean they don't have it. Um, yeah, I mean, my options are limited. It's basically the Ascent, the Skull Bomb, maybe the Mirror's Mantle. I'll take the Skull Bomb, it's, it's gonna be always fine.
Okay. On the other hand, where I have to, I mean, this is not a, you know, a mulligan hand to six, but I'm still gonna risk with it. Uh, it's so good if I hit the third land in three doorstep, and it's not that unlikely. It's actually much more likely to to draw the third land than not. I also have only one Ender's tapped land in my deck. Because of course it's possible that my turn 3 I do draw a land, but it's the one that Ender's tapped, but... Okay, Justice here. Okay, so the game still, you know, makes it exciting for the turn 3. This time I didn't even get a 2 drop here. Okay, so I see now a Swamp. I see where I have Malkator here. Well, they have a perfect start, especially for going first. Hit their splash color too, and if I don't get my third land now, this could be shortly over because this is gonna be a 4 4. Well, why wasn't this happening on the previous turn? <laughs> because I can take 7 damage if they play an artifact now. I go to 10. Oh, they have a kite. Well, that can also make an artifact. Jeez. Kite, kite, kite. Well, might be game over now. That is the so they drew the splash land and the splash splash card. I've got a good feeling about this. Yep. So they can now return one of these guys to get another activation. Nope. I'm pretty close to dead, but I have to try to. Maybe there's like a world. No, I no no. There's no world where I win here because. Kaito is just too... I mean, unless the opponent really misplays a lot of things and they don't have like any more artifacts. <laughs> um, because now I have to take... First of all, this thing has death touch, so... And when this dies, I lose two life. And if they also... Okay, there is it. Something can't be blocked. Who was? Guess I'll see very soon. Uh, no, no, sorry. I was... Can't be that the plus one is up to one target creature can't attack or block, so they made this unable to block. I'm at one <laughs> when this thing dies. Oh, they just have to, you know, hmm, they messed up. They should have just used the triggered ability to return to two two because it it makes me lose two life uh, when it leaves the battlefield. So if they bounce it, I lose two life. Now I've considered it there because of course I'm not gonna. You know, I can play one thing here and then I lose, so let's just go to the next game. Now with that information gained, is there a reason to play like an Ascent? I think there is, because I can make my guy fly, attack and finish off Kaito. That is totally worth it. Um, is it something I play over the Skull Bomb or do I still want to play it? I don't see a lot of Formirod in there. So maybe this skull bomb isn't that great. Okay, I'm gonna actually cut the skull bomb, play the ascent instead, just because of the Kai to have some way to try to push through. And it's not a bad trick, of course it works in normal game situations too. It doesn't I mean it doesn't need the Kaito to be on the battlefield for the card to be useful. Okay. Um yeah, this is this is a keepable hand. I have no two no place for turn 3 or 4 other than the predation if they have a target for it. But I can... Okay, well, scratch that. Of course, there was a very high likelihood to draw something I can cast on turn 3 or 4. Now I can just probably kill off whatever this is and then... Unless I get a 3 drop. And then uh, I have a good curve out here. Good curve out here now. I know I could have attacked into it, but I, I was pretty sure they are not going to block. And then uh, I kind of waste lose one damage man, because if I post combat use the predation, uh, then it's only gonna be you know I dealt only two instead of three. Because of course I had the ascent there. Um, I don't I didn't see how they <laughs> scribed, but hey they have the basic lands here already, so. Um. Yeah, yeah, of course I play this, and uh, I don't care about now this 4 damage that much, because I'm w winning this race. Unless they both play an ossification to deal with the mantis, and then, you know, an artifact to get this thing done. Okay, they can lifelink now. Well, I, I'll keep, kill this Skeeter Fang, because they can lifelink this guy, and it's horrible. They can do it twice more. I'm not gonna block that. 
they have this the seed code which taps only for colorless in terms of you know instant speed interaction. Okay, that's that's totally fine too. So I can play two things in here. Maybe now I'm going to I'm going to again I'm gonna save the world counter for later. Now if they f for some reason block the steward, well they didn't, unsurprisingly. Um, it's maybe safer just to. It is pretty awkward if they do have instant speed interaction. Like a, you know, just a, this, they could be splashing for an annoyed with affliction. Although the blade, this is isn't a good target for it. Because there's a chance I they have play something else I want to bite with the four power creature, but them getting the lifelink there. Okay, I'm gonna risk it now. Hope I at least can respond to the as with the ascent if they have something. But problem is if they play an artifact. But I want them to think that they might be able to gain four this turn, so that's why I didn't want to. That's why I didn't want to. Okay, it doesn't seem they have anything now. Why would I? Wow, well, I have to do this now. Actually, kind of, kind of messed up there, but. No, I could kill the 442 actually, so. Hmm. I mean, they, they won't gain life if I kill the Eye of the Malkator. I still think I can raise the Eye here. Ah, oh, man, this is so tough. I could kill either of them. It, it seems like they didn't have any instant there. Man, I have to do the decision now. Because I will take four damage here if I... I'm, I'm still killing this guy. I think it's the it's the better one. Now they can't remove an oil counter, so they won't get the lifelink. But I'm going down to 12 now. No blocks. Okay, another bite. Well, that's a good one. Um, can't make this guy deal more. Well, I think I'm gonna use the Ascent now to... I'm gonna use oil here now. I'm gonna use now one oil. They go for the jump block. No, no they do that. So now I can do this. And now if they get to animate this guy again, maybe it's time to... Well, it depends on what they use to do that. I might still need to bite for something else. And Kaito won't be that good now. It will still be okay, but it's not that great now. Okay, they had money, so I'm happy I used one of those. one of those um, counters there. Alright, so what do I discard? Well, easy decision. <laughs> totally easy decision. And now they are in trouble. They need more removal for the Fisher. This dealing for doesn't matter currently. They of course have the Mirek, so they can always make it. Oh, well, that's darn good. If they, especially if they have... Uh, well, no, they have one card. They would need two more artifacts to enter. They can make one more artifact to enter. But the point here is that they are not going to block the 4-3, so I hope they don't have an ossification there. They do that on their main phase for some reason. They do, don't have to do that. So do I have a win here? Mm, yes, I do, because I can kill the 3-3 three, three, and then they'll die, because they can only block... They can only block one of my 2-2, two, two, so this is exactly 6 now. Oh, it would have been also 6 by me, actually, you know, giving this fish head plus 2 plus 2 with the steward, but I guess I didn't go for that play. Okay. I lost to Kaito, and otherwise 
I had a good good draw in this final game and uh, um, well, definitely the removal helps. I actually drew all the removal in the deck. Uh, I did have the tap down aura, I guess, too. But that was a blue-green deck that wasn't exactly a proliferate deck. I was able to use Anctus, my first pick in the draft, once. It was relevant. I was able to make my 3-4 troll into a 4-5 troll, which allowed it to attack. Hmm. Mm. But what did I achieve? I mean, what was the idea here? I guess it was just good card quality in the end. I moved to green when I got the very late Vorax. Got some decent green stuff here. And uh, the blue cards here. Oh, they are still still fine cards here. I had a good mana curve, some removal, some you know bigger hitters here. It was a fine deck. Uh, could easily have been something else than a 3-0, but of course I've also gotten like 1-2s with excellent decks, so, so it's not really always so telling that if you get a good or bad result that the deck was necessarily that excellent or, or that bad. But of course I'm always happy to trophy here, so that's it, and uh, I will see you in the next video. Thank you for watching, and bye-bye.